Cool. We here? The mic's working. Mic's working. You're working. Sort I'm sort of. Sure. You sure? Yep. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure. I'm trying Am to I check ever on really you. Working? Those what now? Am I ever really working? Well, d d well, you have your moments. So let's so let's not do like you're not necessarily always fully functioning because you are. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm working. I hope you guys are great because we are here. We are here at the end of 2018, and guess what that means? Lists. And I'm sure you've been listening and watching and reading a lot of lists. Well, let us add one more to your lists by giving you a list of our own. So guess what? This is Aftershock Reviews. I am your host, Nick Rattlehead. Ooh, side profiles. That is my man behind the cameras, 100 grand with the master plan, Matt the Graph. How you doing, Matt? Good. You, you should, that, 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 you guys can never really see Matt, but he's making this very stonewalled face, so he, this is what he did, check this out. Good. Are you great, Matt? I'm always good, Nick. <laughs> Pretty accurate. Yeah, very stoic. I don't know, I still love him, you know what I mean? And I know he still loves me, but, lists. So let us give you some. It has been a magnificent year for music, so far as R&B, Hip hop and metal and hard rock. Hard rock has some stuff too. Uh, the band, what was it? Thunder Pussy had a had a decent record. Lucifer with Lucifer too had a pretty decent record. Made a Veil, very good record. You know what I mean? So hard rock had herself. The Greta Van Fleet, which is probably the most polarizing album I've seen this year. Either people love it or they're like. What in the blue hell is this thing? You know what I mean? Like, why are they riding Zeppelin so hard? So it's like, it's a very polarizing thing. But I think they're okay. I don't have a really have a problem with them. But like we said, Hard Rock had a really great year. R&B had a very awesome year with Queen Nyjah and Summer Walker and Sir and all these other great artists who released good projects. Miss Raven Lene with the Crush EP. Please come to Atlanta. Please do that so I can see you perform these songs live. It would be so amazing. Hip Hop had a great year. Saba with Care For Me. Miss Cardi B releases her major label debut with uh, Invasion of Privacy. And then, you're shaking your head. Okay, move on. Yes. Cardi B to me is the poor man's Nicki Minaj, and I already don't like Nicki Minaj. I think it's the the passion and the ferocity and the rawness of Cardi B that I like more than Nicki Minaj. If anything else, Cardi B is a hoot to listen to. You're right. We should move on. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get into Nick Rattlehead. 20 best of 28 list. Yeah, we can make this sound a little bit more grand and epic later on. I'll try it again at some point or another. But I need my laptop because I wear glasses. So, honorable mentions. We are here now, okay? Now, honorable mentions, we got 10 of them. We in here, we're going to go through them real quick, lightning round. I ain't going to go into details of most of them, but I'm going to go ahead and just shout them out to make sure that we get their names out there. Number 10, Adam Winter with their album, Catacombs. Very great death metal, low key, but it was a very good album. Number nine, Caliucci's with Isolation. Wish it was higher, just like I said, been a great year for music, and I just, that's, I, that was the only place I could fit her in. Number eight, Scorched with Ecliptic Butchery. Oh, gross. Number seven, Funeral Chic with Superstition, Crust Pump. Boom. Hit it. Does the mean do this? Does the, the meme does that. See, instead of laughing at me, you can be helpful. <laughs> like, the, the, whatever. It's a sprinkle of death metal. I'll do it this way. Number six, Conan, existential void guardian. Gross Viking doom metal. Ugh. It's like you freaking beat a forest witch half to death with a club. And as you drag her bloody carcass away, the music plays in the background. It's awesome. It's so good. See, and Matt's laughing at me, but he knows I'm telling the truth. Number five, Wake with Misery Rights. Grindcore death metal. And also, as a little fun fact with this album, Ethan McCarthy of Primitive Man and the now defunct band Vermin Womb is also on this album on songs like Rot. I think he's on Rot. 
but he's on two tracks on this album. Very, 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 very good. Underrated, not talked about enough. Number four, one of our favorite albums, Teenage Wrist, Chrome Neon Jesus. It is just a great slice of 90s alternative rock music. I'm telling you, if you guys like the Radiohead, if you like Pavement, if you liked all that good stuff from back then, back in the day, you'll love this. It's just a cool walk down memory lane. It's a great nostalgia trip, but it's just a really cool, fun listen. Number three, Church Burn, None Shall Live, Hymns of Misery. There it is. That is a mouthful to say. Doom metal, death metal, henna black metal, very atmospheric, completely awesome. It's weird, but it's great. It is dark. No light in that album whatsoever, and it is magnificent for it. Number two, Hooded Menace, Osarium Silhouettes Unhallowed. Very great doom metal album. I was shocked that it was a little bit, it wasn't higher up on even people's, you know, honorable mentions list, but it's still a very good album. Needs to be talked about more. Number one for our runner-ups, Infernal Coil, Within a World Forgotten. Great album. It's, and I would love to shoehorn it into the top ten. Couldn't necessarily do it. So there are our runner-ups. So now, here we are, the main event. Matt, are you ready? Yes. I'm ready. I hope you guys are ready, too. Here is our top ten for 2018. Aftershock of Let's go. Number ten. Mammoth Grinder, The Cosmic Crypt. Now, I know what some of you metalheads are going to say, Nick, it's so one note, and all they do is play the same D beat throughout the entire track. But riddle me this. If the same note is very good, do you mind if it's played over and over? Answer, no. <laughs> there are four. <laughs> this album is fun. It's great. It's cavernous. It's grimy. Freaking love it. Good job, Chris Olsh. Good job, company. Uh, I think they have some uh, members from Red Fang, I think, they're, or Red Death. One of those two are mem also members of this band. Really, really, really good death metal DB album. Awesome job. Number nine, Saba, Care For Me. Matt, this is a hip-hop album that my buddy... Uh, I'm sure some of you guys know him if you are familiar with our podcast, Runaway Jukebox, that used to be floating around on SoundCloud. Mr. Jay Burrito, shout out to you, my man, I love you. This album was an album he kept trying to push on me, Matt. It is a hip-hop album by a young man from Chicago named Saba. He was also on No Name's Room 25. Great album, by the way. You should go listen to that. Uh, and he's like, Nick, listen to it. It is awesome. You'll love it. I listened to it one time, and I was like, eh. Okay, and then I forgot about it. But something happened, I don't know what it was. I went back and listened to the album again, Matt, and everything just clicked, just clicked, and fell into place. And I'm telling you this right now, it's one of the best hip hop albums I've ever heard this year, bar none, period. Go listen to it. That is Saba, Care For Me. Number eight, my baby, Summer Walker. Last days of summer. If you saw the review, you know how much I love this album. You know how much I'm feeling this album. Smooth vocals, very atmospheric, very laid back, very cool and breezy. I'm telling you, this album is amazing. If you're looking for a good slice of moody R&B with an artist that is just as troubled as the rest of us normal human beings, that's the one you should be listening to. That is Summer Walker, Last Day of Summer, at number eight. Number seven, Genocide Pact, Order of Torment. Now, why do I like this, you ask? It's because it is bare bones death metal. Cannibal Corpse inspired, groovy death metal. Guttural vocals, amazing job. And it does a good job of giving some social commentary while also painting a fantasy land at some points. But the thing I love about it at the same time, though, is is Matt, is that it's dumb. The approach to it is dumb as heck. And I know you're like, well, Nick, what about like horrendous is idle and all, the, and all the good stuff like forward thinking death metal and death metal that pushes the boundaries. I don't care about any of that, bro. I don't care. Couldn't care less. Look me now. I don't care. I don't care. 
I want my death metal to be stupid. Like if somebody, I want them to think that somebody with a third grade reading level has wrote the lyrics. That's how dumb I want it. It is awesome. This album is great. Not saying that these guys are stupid, because they're not. But this is such a bare bones, stripped back, Cro-Magnon way of approaching death metal that just makes it crushing and it makes it fun and it makes it enjoyable. So that is Genocide Pact, Order of Torment. Number six, Death Heaven. Ordinary Corrupt Human Love. Nick, you like Death Heaven? Why do you like Death Heaven? Death Heaven's not real black metal. Ugh. I don't care. Get out of my face. It's metal with a hint of black metal in there. There's some shoegaze, post-metal, or post-rock, whichever one. It's just all dumped together, and it works. It's fun. And then on top of that, I love George's voice. It's a great, great listen. A lot of ups and downs musical side streets, sharp turns, a lot of simmering, and like highs and lows. It's, it's, it's a great album. It is a great album. And I think it's the only time where I'm like, yo, I want you to push the envelope a little bit. I want you to be a little bit forward thinking. I want you to take what you've done on albums like Sunbather and New Bermuda and push that forward. And that's exactly what they did. And they created to me their opus when it came to this album. So that is Death Heaven, Ordinary Corrupt, Human love at number six. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Number five, a feather and bone, bestial hymns of perversion. This is a situation where all the five albums, I just love them so much that it's like somebody telling you, you have to choose which of your children you love more. And it's just such a painstaking process. So let me tell you, that album is amazing. Buy it, buy it today. Buy it when you're done watching this video. Matter of fact, pause the video and then go buy the album. That is how good it is. I'm telling you, it's like Satan hawked a loogie, and then they got it on freaking, got it on the microphone, and they're like, you know what? That's good enough. Satan, could you hawk one more so we can make sure we got the best take that we could get? And he hawks up another loogie, and then now you've got this album. That is what this is. It is gross, it is disgusting, it is putrid, and it keeps lurching at you. No, and it gives you false senses of security with little, with little like easy soundscapes at some point, and it just lurches at you again. Blast beat drumming, beautiful production, and licks that will stay stuck into your head. That is a feather and bone, bestial hymns of perversion. Number four, here we go. Tomb mold, manner of infinite forms. Oh, riffs, 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 riffs. Riffs, finish death metal and riffs. And the riffs are so slimy that they're coming off of the walls, dripping onto the floor, and then making a big pile of goo in the corner. That is how gross this album is. Freaking love it. And fun fact, if you guys haven't been looking, they've already announced a new album for next year. So we're getting another two. That'll be three years in a row. 17, 18, and 19 that we're getting a two mold album. These guys are hardworking, and these guys deserve every bit of attention and acclaim that they get. That is two mold, manner of infinite forms at number four. Number three, Lupe Fiasco, Drogas Wave. Let me tell you something. Don't listen. Any of these people who are saying, yo, this album ain't as good as you think it is. It's, it's overblown. It's an hour and 28 minutes. That's too long. It's long-winded. It's got filler tracks. Let me tell you something. It's everything that Lupe Fiasco is. Lupe Fiasco is long-winded, and he's dope for it. Lupe Fiasco is a little bit difficult to understand, if that makes Well, not difficult to understand, but difficult to unpack. He's dope for it. He's corny as hell, and he's dope for it. Notable tracks, listen to King Nas, listen to Haile Selassie, listen to Drown, listen to, to Wave Files. This is an awesome, wonderful, wonderful album. If you liked Tetsuo in Youth, if you liked The Cool and Food and Liquor, the first one, you will love this album. A little bit long, but it blazes by with how great that this thing is. There's an overarching narrative. It's just so intricate that it goes over my head, so I really can't necessarily explain it to you. But at number three, that is Lupe Fiasco, Drogas Wave. Number two. Oh, Matt, this was hard. This was hard, but I had to do it. I'm wearing their shirt. I loved them. 
one of our past videos has them as the subject. Outer Heaven, Realms of Eternal Decay. I love this album to the moon and back. I was anticipating this album when they dropped the single Into Hellfire earlier this year. And I waited 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 till it dropped. And it did. And it was awesome. And it, 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 it just cemented in my mind that they're going to be one of my favorite bands, just period. Songs like Multicellular Savagery, songs like Bloodspire, songs like Vortex of Thought. There it is. They, they have a lot of like longer title names. Putrid Dwellings. All of these great stuff, just chock full of good riffs. Punishing, groovy, chunking, plotting riffs. It's gross. And the overarching thing for this thing is, apparently there is a virus that affects prehistoric man, and man now thinks that they have to eat each other to survive. So guess what they do? They start eating each other alive. And it is gross. And it is awesome. The cover has the bacteria people beating each other. One guy is beating the dude in the head with a bone, probably from another human being. And then over here, the guy is, gouging, is gouging out this guy's eye and eating his neck. That is metal. That is awesome. So let me tell you something. If you're looking for the whole shebang, riffs, awesome, just cavernous, guttural vocals from Mr. Austin Haynes. And if you're looking for atmosphere, and even down to the awesome album artwork, you need to hop on to Outer Heaven, Realms of Eternal Decay. That is out now. Go get it. Do what I say. Pause this video. I'll wait. I'm patient. Did you get it yet? Good. That is Outer Heaven, number one. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Matt, are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Hope you guys are ready. I'd ask you for a drum roll, but you don't have drumsticks or anything else. Like, well, could you pat on your, pat on your thing? No, you got to do it like a drum roll. Like, no, no, that's that's too slow. But never mind, Matt. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, drum roll, please. Our number one album for 2018 is Hey Heads for the Dead. Yes, Serpent's Curse. Yes. Oh, yes, man. It wasn't a game, bro. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I, there's no possible way that I could not let this album not be number one. No possible way. The day I heard it, I was ranting and raving. The day I heard it. It is everything I want in death metal. It, 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 it takes a corny subject matter like old pulp horror movies, and it builds a whole awesome, multifaceted death metal album around it. Is it stupid at times? Yes! And it, like, a, a friggin' HM2 pedal makes Swedish death metal, slows it down on songs like Deep Below to a crawl. My gosh. And when they really want to amp it up like the title track, Serpent's Curse, or if they really want to amp it up with tracks like Postmortem Suffering, Matt, this is the most, Matt, it literally makes me want to go and ram my head against a brick wall at 20 miles an hour with no helmet repeatedly until I just get hype. I'm telling you, listen to me, watch me. You see this? You see how hype I'm getting? You see how excited I'm getting? That's how I, that's how you know this album is dope. This, Matt, I'm telling you. So let me slow down. Catch a breather. Woo-sa. We here. Matt, from start to finish, this is one of the most engaging and just fun to listen to albums I've had this year. Tracks like the opening track, Serpent's Curse, where it does a great job of making you feel like you're watching an old episode of The Twilight Zone, or what is that other show that Rod Serling did? Guys in the comments, if you guys know what that other show that uh, Rod Serling did, I, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, please write that down in the comments below. Thanks, very much appreciate it. Matt, it just, it feels old. It feels like something that you'd see off of Elvira's Mistress of, a Dar Mistress of the Dark. Can't talk, I'm that hype. 
it is so much fun. Man, it is so much fun. Whether they're going 80 miles an hour, whether they're slowing it down on tracks like The Awakening and Deep Below, the twin vocal assault from the tortured shrieks to the lumbering guttural straight from the bottom of your stomach grunted vocals, right? It is so good in the riffs. The riffs, the riffs, the riffs, the riffs. These guys are awesome writers. Awesome on their instruments. Whoever did the pro Matt, this is the best album I've heard this year. By far and away is the best album I heard this year. And I found myself trying to cuz I loved uh, Outer Heavens album so much. I'm trying to justify it next to Serpent's Curse, and I just can't do it because you'll listen to Vortex of Thought and you'll go right back and you'll listen to Serpent's Curse, which is the, the first track off of both albums, and you just go down the row and it's just clear. You know what I mean? Like, Heads for the Dead knew what they wanted to do. They wanted to be able to go fast and go slow. Go fast and then go slow. So they beat you up, and then they drag the bloody carcass to another room and then bludgeon that carcass even more. It is so, so great. Also, in its presentation, the album artwork, it's, it's the best album artwork this year. The only, the only reason why I'm not wearing a, a Serpent's Curse shirt right now is because USPS are a bunch of jerks, and they literally can't do anything right. It's the only reason why I'm not wearing my uh, Serpent's Curse album right now. Wonderful, 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 wonderful album. Please, go support this band. I'm telling you, this is a band that's going to be something. This is a band that's going to end up being important. And I'm telling you, I just want everybody to know who they are. This is Heads for the Dead, Serpent's Curse. It takes a lot from Swedish death metal, and I know everybody's like, oh, the HM2 pedal. Yeah, it's there! but they're not hiding behind it. Yeah, it's there, it's not a crutch. The riffs, the musicality, the vocals, the production, they are all there at the peak level. I'm telling you, it's, it, it's pristine. It is so good. It is so vicious and nasty that it is what, heads for the dead, serpent's curse. Go check it out. Please go check that out. Now that I'm done ranting and raving, now that I'm done trying to squeeze in all this information into however long this video might be, <laughs> might be I'm just gonna take a breath, lay back. I hope you guys have a great 2018, and I hope you guys start off 2019 in a big and wonderful, marvelous way. Thank you guys for watching. We are uber excited for what's going to happen next year. We're We'll have another Tomb Mold album, we'll have Gate Creeper, we'll have Full of Hell. Even prayerfully, since it'll be three years since their last release and they're usually going threes, we'll probably even have another Nails album. Great stuff, and we don't even know who we'll get from uh, hip hop and R&B, but we will be there. I know that. And then on top of that, also look in the beginning, like I promise, and I'm promising you guys this, the 21 Savage album review will be in January, early, early, early January, just waiting for you. Thank you again. Can I wait to embark on this journey with you guys? I am Nick Rattlehead. He is Matt. The Graph. A. We are after shock reviews, man. Matt, come into the video real quick. Nope. Please. Nah. Please. I'm good. Please. It's okay. Please. Maybe 2019. Are you? You promise? I don't promise. I said maybe. Matt, but they want it, but I want you to I want them to see who you are. It's cold. Okay. Sooner or later. All right. Well at some point you guys will see it. Maybe he can just be the mystery guy behind the camera. Love y'all. Have a good one. Peace. <laughs> that was a lot to try to squeeze in.